at this place in history. We're in Windsor with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. What are we doing out here today? So we're going to be talking about the American system, the idea of interchangeable parts, and a lot of that developed right here in Windsor. So we're going to go inside the American Precision Museum and speak to their director, Steve DeLazio, and he's going to tell us all about it. Steve, we're talking about interchangeable parts. Can you explain sort of the genesis of that? Well, if you go back to the uh, mid-1800s, if you had a gun and you were in the battlefield somewhere and you broke a part, there's no corner store to go get a part from. Just like it is today, there's so many places to get replaceable parts for everything in our, our lives just about. So you would have to find a gunsmith somewhere to fabricate, hand fabricate a part. Around the 18 50s or so, the government, the U.S. government, was saying, we don't want that to happen anymore. We want to have guns that are made with all interchangeable parts. And they were beginning to add to the contracts for guns the requirement to have interchangeable parts. And that's really what started this whole idea of interchangeability. Robbins and Lawrence, here in the American Precision Museum, which is the Robbins and Lawrence Armory, Robbins and Lawrence actually tried to move this whole process forward to the American system of manufacture, which was really the idea of interchangeable parts and precision manufacturing. And they started to create and to move forward some of the equipment that was built, machine tools that were built and designed in various places to be able to make uh, gun parts interchangeable. And we can see some of that here, right? Yes, is our gun stock lathe. If you can picture in the 1840s or so, somebody trying to build a gun stock with a draw knife and a file and so forth, everyone would be different. Just like an artist paints a picture, each one was a little different based on the craftsman that built it. But here, they decided that we can follow a pattern. If you follow a pattern with one wheel and drive the cutter with the, from that wheel, you'd be able to reproduce the part. So the first part of this process started with pattern copying. We went from about 14 hours to handcraft a gun stock to like 14 in an hour. And where did this where did this go? We're talking about guns right now, but within the 19th century, what else benefited? Well, from everything this? started to go forward from here. We knew that if we built parts precisely, they'd all become interchangeable. Today, with modern technology, with computer feedback, you now have CNC computer numerical controlled machines out there, able to run into the tenths of a thousandth of an inch and so interchangeability becomes almost a norm. There's no variation from part to part, very small. So if people want to learn more about this early years of precision manufacturing, how can they learn more? Well, you can look on our website, theamericanprecision.org, or come to the American Precision Museum here in Windsor, Vermont, and we'll be able to explain it firsthand to everybody. At this place in history,